Hi, welcome back to Do Fix Differently. In this episode, I want to talk a little bit about a trend that we're seeing in some of our prospects and some of our customers. And that's the, um, the merger of production support style functions and onboarding functions within the Fix arena. So first of all, why is this happening? Why, why are these two functions coming together? Uh, and there's a number of reasons for it. The first is that Fix is actually a niche. There's a lot of knowledge and experience that you need in order to be able to talk Fix. Um, there's um, a lot of uh, uh, tools that are common, so things like fixed parses and stuff like that. They're really needed for, you, for somebody to be effective in this particular role. Second big issue is that onboarders are really the people who understand the API. Um, if you're doing a, a general trade support style role inside of a bank, for example, uh, you might be interested in some of the functionality that the traders are actually um, uh, giving out to their customers or the logic of your matching engine, for example. Uh, you may not have been focused too much on the ins and outs of, the, of your particular fixed API. And so it makes sense to go to the fixed onboarders who have got far more experience of that API. Uh, and thirdly, this it's about the history of the clients. So one of the things we find time and time again when it comes to fixed onboarding is that um, there might be an agreement with a customer, perhaps to default to a specific field, or that they're going to use um, some piece of functionality but not other pieces of functionality. Um, and all of these things are typically not very well documented inside of firms. Um, and so there's kind of, there's just a feeling of knowing where the bodies are buried, um, uh, frankly. And that's, that normally sits inside of the, the fixed onboarding team. And it's that knowledge, that history of the customer that really the production support guys uh, need to access. So when I say that these two functions are actually merging, I don't really mean that they're merging into one team. It just feels as if um, what we would traditionally think of as um, level one production support, so the guys who get the initial issue and start troubleshooting it, that becomes very thin in terms of fix. So the minute that they see a, any particular issue and it's got fix written on it, they immediately take whatever it is, um, whatever input that they've been given, perhaps it's a log file or something like that, and immediately send it to the fix onboarding team. There's no real level of troubleshooting uh, going on in production support, which might actually differ from management's understanding of what's going on in, the, in this particular case. Why is that necessarily a bad thing? Well, it's, it has a, a few knock-on implications, and mostly it's about taking away resources from your, um, from your onboarding team. So onboarding generally is a series of projects, all of which happen simultaneously and in parallel. Uh, they can be quite complex because you've got lots of other um, people who are involved in completing the project, a lot of balls juggling in the air. You imagine being in that situation and suddenly you're also hit with production issues at the same time, it can be very distracting. So what it does is it causes a ripple effect on your onboarding teams. It means that they are going slower in terms of bringing your customers in through the door. And that's, the, that's the main kind of um, uh, disadvantage of it. There's other disadvantages as well, which is onboarders typically are confined to using um, test environments. They don't normally have access to production boxes. Um, for, for a variety of very, very obvious and very uh, correct reasons. But that means that actually the person who's been asked to troubleshoot something may not even have access to the logs in which to troubleshoot it. And so you've got this, this game of telegram here where one person needs to provide the logs so that somebody else can look at the logs. And the third part is actually more of a, a management uh, uh, issue. And that is that KPIs, key performance indicators, are actually quite easy to put in place for people who are doing production support. How many tickets do you bring in? How quickly do you resolve those tickets? Um, and that's actually quite a difficult metric um, inside of a bank in the traditional fixed onboarding uh, arena. And the reason for that is that um, a onboarding project typically has so many other people involved in it, you don't know why you're going to be delayed in, in uh, bringing on board that customer. Perhaps it's a network issue or it's the customer themselves have gone on holiday or something like that. Uh, and so KPIs in the fixed onboarding world are quite difficult to put in place. Add into the mix though, they're getting hit with production issues and suddenly those metrics to the extent that you are able to capture them start getting longer and longer and longer. So it's generally um, a lot of disadvantages to having the production support guys um, come in and, and bother the, the fix onboarding guys a little bit too much. Should you completely separate them and have them as two formal teams? Probably not. That's unrealistic to expect that you can actually have that level of division. But there are some things that you can do to make this whole process better. Uh, and really, there are four, um, four things that we would recommend. First is to actually equip your production support team with some of the tooling that allows them to be uh, effective in troubleshooting um, issues as they come in. You're looking for the 80-20 rule. If they can satisfy maybe 80% of the, the tickets themselves because it's a simple lookup, a simple understanding of what's gone wrong with a particular fixed message, 
that saves you a huge amount of time and energy. Then will still be items that they still need to escalate up to the fix onboarding team, but it, the more you can give to them that they can troubleshoot themselves, uh, the better you will be. And the way to do that is to equip them with good log parsers. That's the, that's the key. So if a log parser understands your particular API and they can just feed to the log files that they have access to directly into that log parser, and it'll show up to them all of the, the errors right there in a human readable format, suddenly they know what to do about it and maybe they can just resolve the issue themselves without going to the fix onboarding team. Uh, the second one is to try to remove some of the work off the, the fix onboarder's plate. Uh, and one of the best ways of doing that is to uh, think about ways to automate and provide self-service in your certification. So if a customer is um, going through the certification process at their own speed, they're self-guided through a self-service portal, um, then actually your onboarder doesn't need to be there um, to schedule conversations with the customer, for example, they can all do it on, on their own. By, re by releasing your onboarders from some of the repetitive manual processes that they may be going through, allows them more time to juggle both the onboarding side and the, the production support side. Third thing um, is about documenting what clients are actually capable for. Now, in, in other um, episodes, we've talked a little bit about the importance of documentation and getting documentation correct. I've also touched on the idea of customer-specific documentation. Now, customer-specific documentation, uh, one of the main reasons for doing that is to actually capture what the customer is capable of and what your contractual agreement with them from an API perspective, what that actually is. So you've agreed with them, they will send in this value, they will not send in that value. Uh, and all of that is captured inside of the customer-specific specifications. If you were to embrace the idea of um, high quality documentation and customer specific specifications, that combined with the idea of a, of a parser, which your production support guys have, should really equip you to be able to troubleshoot the vast majority of these things inside your production support team and not require fix on borders to actually come in. But it does require that, that upfront investment and commitment to, to building your documentation. And the fourth thing that you should really be looking for is to try to extend the ticketing concept that you might have in your production support team over into onboarding. So if you look at most production support teams, they have some sort of uh, ticket process by which they track issues as they come in and all the way through to their resolution. So that might be something like um, ServiceNow, it might be something like uh, Jira, perhaps, or something else uh, along those lines. Um, those types of tools for the purpose of tracking tickets are not typically extended over into um, the onboarding team, but I would recommend that actually that's something that you do do. And the reason for that is that the minute you start to realize that a particular um, issue has been migrated over to the fixed onboarding team and has spent a certain amount of time being troubleshot by the onboarding team uh, until it gets resolved, so you can understand from a, a metrics perspective who is doing the work inside of your organization, you're better equipped to be able to identify the bottlenecks and where you need to invest time or, or resources to be able to shift the, the, um, uh, the, the work back to somewhere else where it can be dealt with more effectively. So those are the three things that um, we recommend here. Uh, real production support, look for the 80-20 rules, uh, automate self-certification, uh, embrace documentation as a way of reducing the amount of um, repetition that you have to have and understanding the contract between customers, extend the ticketing to, into the onboarding team. I hope this helps. I hope this has given you some uh, good food for thought in terms of how to improve your overall production support uh, of a fixed interface. Um, tune in next time for more tips and tricks and how to do fix differently. <laughs>